Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to our Life Purpose Church service. I know the time changed, but I hope you guys get some rest. I hope you guys continue to have a, a restful sleep. And we're very excited. You guys know it's November, and man, you know, I always like the season, you know, in November and December, the holiday, we have Christmas, we have Thanksgiving, it's always a time to spend with family, with loved ones, but just, just have a time to, to take a break and just spend time with family. I know um, every year I spend, I spend family, I mean, I spend Thanksgiving with the Florida family, Anna and Anthony Florida. As you guys know, Anna Florida, she's the one that helped me get the name Light Purpose uh, Church, and thank you. Anna Flores, always appreciate your friendship with Anthony Flores. And uh, before we get into a lot of our announcements and update, we'll have uh, James to open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you are and all that you give. Thank you for another day and to do your will. We thank you for forgiving us, showing us grace and mercy through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Just a few things I wanted to share. Before we get into the message, though, guys, um, I guys know we're going to stick with our original logo. I want to say a, a very special thank you to Moses Hernandez. He created the logo. He didn't get this from Google. He didn't get this for anything. This is all original, meaning that he created the dove and, and, and light purpose. And also, you guys know Sal Ortiz. He did a sticker. I want to say thank you to Sal Ortiz. And if you guys want to find some graphic or any design or any professional work, just go to Facebook. To Christ Up Ministry, or you guys go on Instagram, Christ Up 330, and just send them a message. He'll do wonderful and amazing work for you guys. And as you guys know, um, today is part one in our sermon series called Family. And for the whole month of November, we're going to be talking about family. And James, uh, I want to give you a break. I know you've been preaching a lot already, but I want to give you a small break. That way you can come back in March for the bigger one for your sermon series. So, so I guess I'll be always preaching the rest of the month in November and December. We also have guest speaker in December, but we're very excited what God is doing. And also we want to say a very, very special appreciation and thank you to Genesis Valencia. She's a senior at Nicaragua High School and her birthday was yesterday. And, and we want to say God bless you, Genesis. Thank you for all your work and your time, you know, for the Bible scripture pictures you post on Instagram. I know we're always very appreciated. We want to honor you, Genesis. I know you've been with me since January, so you're almost going to be with me for one year of January. So thank you so much, Genesis Valencia. So on that day, I'm going to ask James to come up here. Alrighty. Welcome to Life Purpose Church. Uh, once again, my name is James Choeta, um, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Brother Jared. Um, so, uh, Jared asked me to speak about family. And uh, I know it's a sensitive topic, it's a good topic also. Um, the title of my message, I'm going to call it uh, The Ripples We Make. And uh, I'm going to go over a couple points. So, the first one is going to be... Um, I'm going to ask the question is, is there a head in your family? Is there somebody that's that godly person that's running your family, that's in charge, that's always, you know, going to the Lord when, you know, there's an issue or there's a, a guidance that needs to be done? Um, is that person there? It can be your father, mother, you know, whatever the case is. It's supposed to be the man of the house, the father. But, uh, you know, I'm asking that question if that person is there. Um, the person that, uh, in the Bible that I'm going to bring up, uh, it's, uh, one of those, uh, he was, a a priest. His name was Eli. Um, he had two sons named Hophni and Phineas. And I bring up Eli because he was a priest. He was in charge of a, of a place of worship. And he was also in charge of his family. He had sons that he made priests as well that you serve the Lord and they, you know, they, uh, they went to that same, uh, area, you know, they, they were priests like their father. Um, so I, I wanted to say is, uh, you know, did Eli do as the Lord commanded? You know, if you look at scripture in first Samuel, uh, chapter two, verse 12, you know, it, it talks about Eli's sons. 
Eli's sons were scoundrels. They had no regard for the Lord. So these two priests, they were, uh, they weren't doing the offerings correct. They were taking what they should not have been taking that should have been given to the Lord. Um, and I, I don't think that Eli was giving them the the bad example. I think he he was you know he was a godly man. And later on in Scripture, you know, you know he comes in contact with Samuel as a young man, and the Lord uh, he uh, he gives Samuel you know a prophecy about Eli and his family. Um, and Eli is asking him, you know, what did the Lord tell you? Doesn't matter what he said. I need to know. Don't lie. Let me know. Uh, I'm paraphrasing there. And, uh, you know, basically, you know, he, Samuel tells him that, you know, God is, is going to eliminate your line, your family, because of, you know, the way that your sons are acting um, and how they're, you know, taking care of themselves. So I'm going to go to my second scripture. It's called, uh, it's First uh, Samuel uh, chapter 2. 25 to 26, if one person sins against another, God may mediate for the offender. But if anyone sins against the Lord, who will intercede for them? His sons, however, did not listen to their father's rebuke, for it was the Lord's will to put them to death. And the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and in favor with the Lord and with people. So basically, that was Eli rebuking his sons. And that's the Lord in Scripture saying... I'm going to remove you, and I'm bringing up Samuel to replace you. Um, so, Eli had all the chances. He was given that prophecy. And in my uh, belief, you know, did he shrug off the Lord? Did he do all that he could to correct his sons, to be that example, to put them in the straighter path that they were falling away from? Um, so his sons chose the easy, selfish way. Um, and, you know, there's so much that parents can do with children, um, or with any family member. You need to do all that you can. Like I said, I don't feel Eli did that. I think he just shrugged it off. Um, but you need to do all that you can, and then the rest, that's the Lord. The Lord is going to come in, and He's going he's gonna to take care of the rest for you. Um, so, the, the last scripture that I'm going to go over about Eli is this. So, therefore the Lord of God, the, therefore the Lord, the God of Israel, declares, I promised that members of your family would minister before me forever. But now the Lord declares, for be it Far be it from me, those who honor me, I will honor, but those who despise me will be disdained. The time is coming when I will cut short your strength and the strength of your priestly house, so that no one will reach old age, and you will see the distress in my dwelling. Although good will be done to Israel, no one in your family line will ever reach old age. Every one of you that I do not cut off from serving at my altar, I will spare only to destroy your sight and sap your strength, and all the descendants will die in the prime of life. So here, God is removing, you know, he's removing this issue that he brought up to Eli. He gave Eli every point, every, uh, you know, chance to fix it. And like I said, I, I believe that Eli just shrugged it off and, you know, he did not set that example for his sons. Um, and so the next, uh, Point that I'm gonna make is are you being an example you know a good example to the people in your family um, and the best example that I'm gonna give is you know by loving that's what Christians are known by is the way they love and the question or the topic that I want to bring up you know and I'll go back to Eli real quick is how can you love something if you ignore it like Eli was ignoring the Lord like, how can you do that? Um, so if you have, you know, everybody has that family member that doesn't seem to be, you know, in there, paying attention, um, not really trying, but 
you still need to love them. You need to try and guide them. You need to do all that you can. Um, you need to show that love. You don't give up on people that you love. And the scripture I'm going to go to next, it's very common. Everybody knows it. Uh, it's 1 Corinthians 13, 4, uh, 4 through 7. So love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self, self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. A brother of mine from church always, uh, you know, he told me when I was going through tough times, you know, replace those main words with your name. Like James is patient. James is kind. Uh, James does not envy. He always told me to, to do that when, you know, you're not, you know, you're not in that loving mood or that area, you know, like put your name in there and think about that scripture and, you know, really meditate on it and see where you're at. And um, if you, if you really, you know, want to help out that family member or, or show them, you know, like, you know, if they're not followers of Christ, that's the best way you can show them is by, you know, that example right there in First Corinthians. You show them that you're patient. You don't get anger like if, like it says in James. Uh, slow to speak, slow to anger. You know, that scripture. Um, you really should, you know, give that example that aura off. Um, and the next scripture that I'm going to go to is from John. It's 13, uh, 34, 35. This is a new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another. So, like I brought up that question before is, how can you love something if you ignore it? You can't do that. And that doesn't just mean your family members. That means, you know, perfect strangers out there. Like, you you can't ignore that if you... You need to at least make that effort to try... And, you know, help that person, show them love, have a simple conversation about Jesus with them. Whatever you can do, that's what you do. That's what you should try and, you know, you know, shoot for it. Um, And then the other one (laughs) is uh, love, like it says in 1 Peter 4, 8, you know, above all, love each other deeply. For love covers a multitude of sins. That one, that one is a, a very big one to me. It's always stuck with me, that scripture, because, you know, we're humans, we're not perfect. We're going to make those mistakes. Family, you know, growing up with your siblings, parents, aunts, uncles, whatever the case, you know, they're always going to, there's there probably going to be arguments. There's probably going to be things that maybe cause some separation. But love it will all, like it will ultimately mend those fences. It will open those bridges up. Doors that get locked, they get unlocked by that. You know, if you just show a little humility, a little forgiveness, it always, you know, it will always help. Um, so the next topic that I'm gonna go over is um, What is family? Like you have, basically you have two types of family. You have your, you know, your immediate family, you know, your parents, sisters, brothers, stuff like that. You have another family. It's your family in Christ. That family is, you know, that's the one that people tend to forget about. You know, life gets so busy. We get so caught up in whatever it is that's going on. You know, we, yeah, we're always going to take care of our family, but you have another family. You know, you, you have, you know, your brothers from church, sisters from church. You have, you know, you know, that's, that's why you should go to church and serve, you know, serve the Lord. That's the main purpose of that too. Um, so in that, you need to kind of make that decision, you know, like, you know, you, you and I know it's a hard decision, but because sometimes, you know, we don't get along with our family. We don't see eye to eye. Like, you know, I'm a believer in Christ. Sometimes you have family members that are not. It's going to create friction. 
Um, and I always, <laughs> I, I, I've always had to explain that to some family members, but you know, like it says in Psalms 37, 23, the Lord makes firm the steps of one who delights in him. He is going to make those, you know, those steps perfect for you because, you know, you can't please everybody, but that's, that's your job is to seek the Lord and what you consider as family and the other topics that I went over is examples and love. That's what you should be showing to your family. You should never be ashamed of that. Um, because if you're seeking the Lord, there's nothing that, that, you know, it's, there should be no issues with that. Like it says in, in Ephesians here, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is not the gift. Oh, it is the gift of God. So your family is not going to give you salvation. You know, it's nothing that you can do. It's nothing a family member can do for you. You know, that is the, that's the gift from God. You know, Jesus came for, you know, to tear down that curtain. He came for us. Um, and then the next one that I'm going to uh, go over in the next scripture is 1 John 3, 3. Um, and everyone who has, who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he is pure. So there are people that are just so focused on, you know, what my parents think or what my, my aunt or my sister or brother, whatever the case, that, that, that gives you all the reason to put your hope in the Lord. You have to be, you have to be Christ centered. Like it has to be like that. There's nothing else that should matter because you're only here for a short amount of time. You have uh, certain things that, that come up in this world, but the main one that should always be your focus is after this. That's where it should be. So I, I, there's a scripture that I've been, I just read it probably a few days ago. Uh, I've been reading the gospels and you know, it's in Luke 8, 20, it's 8, 20, uh, and 21. It says, someone told, told him your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. He replied, my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. So that's a, that's a strong scripture because this is coming from, you know, Jesus' own words and he's, everybody's saying, oh, your, your worldly family is here. He's like, no, my family is right here, listening to me teach, coming, you know, for their salvation. Um, and then the next scripture is also something that always stuck me when I read it was in Luke 960 where it says, you know, Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. This is after Jesus calls a gentleman and uh, he's like, I know I have to go and, and bury my father and take care of this. Uh, you know, that's so many things can come into your life and separate you from God. And I know that that's a, you know, people might read that scripture and, you know, might negatively think about it, but, you know, what, what really matters to you? Like, you know, your family, you should be, you should have that focus on the Lord. And like what Jesus was telling this gentleman is, you know, you know, I'm calling you right now. It's time for you to come. This is your time. And uh, apparently this gentleman was not ready. So the main topics of, of you know, my message today is, is that, you know, the example. Are you setting the example for your family? Especially if you have a family that are full of non-believers. Are you showing them love? You show them enough love. And it's going to be something that intrigues them, it interests them. They're going to start asking you questions. They're going to, you know, they want to know why is there such a 180 in the way, you know, you were before. Um, they're going to want to know that. And you should be able to answer those questions for them. There's also, you know, there's a, a topic of correction. Because there sometimes there's persecution in families where, you know, like, 
you know, why do you believe in that or why are you doing that? And you need to set up those boundaries and let them know that, you know, this is my salvation. This is what I'm here for, you know, is to seek the Lord. Um, so, you know, that, that, that topic with, with family, it's, a uh, you know, it's, it's something that I, I would say for all of you to, you know, just look into it and see where you're at, see where your family's at and, you know, do your best to set that example, you know, for your family members now and maybe for your, you know, your future family, for the generation that's, you know, to come next. And, you know, just like I said, seek the Lord and show, you know, show the love that the Lord has shown you and show it to them as well. Um, just want to say thank you, Brother Jared, for letting me speak again. Um, that's my message. Amen. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of challenges and growing in, up in the church ministry. I know right now I'm doing my own personal Bible study by doing chapter to chapter from Genesis to Revelation. You know, even studying the, the Minor Prophet, the Book of Psalms, you know, Proverbs and, and Prophet Solomon, Ecclesiastes, but oh, of course the Gospel, the letters, and the end time which is revelation but we're going to continue to grow and to give you guys an idea of a calendar we are going to have service every sunday of our, our usual schedule on of course at 7 p.m i know I, I will be preaching twice on family revenue q a on november 20th with a senior from Rowe high school and then december uh, we, are, we are going to do a new service called faith hope and love based on first Corinthians chapter 13 verse 13 and we are going to have a Christmas banquet. Uh, we are going to have a Saturday service on December 17. I am going to invite a, a speaker, Abby Favender, who's going to be coming and sharing. And we're going to have our annual candlelight service. I'm still debating. We might do, we might do it in Edinburgh. Because I'm still waiting on some, some confirmation from Worcester. Uh, if not, we, just, we can just do it here. But so, you know, we're gonna, we are going to finish up the year of 2022 and just gonna continue prepping forward for 2023. So thank you everyone. Uh, I'll keep you updated on Instagram. I want to say a special thank you for uh, our members. I know right now Amy Garcia from Boston and Michael Madrigal from UTRGB. So I want to say thank you for those two. Uh, I know they want to come here, but I know that you can watch on, online or Instagram. Well, thank you Amy and, and Mike Madrigal. Mike Macias. I'm sorry, Mike Macias. So I want to ask uh, James to go prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for always protecting our families. We hope that you guide the family members that are not in Christ to Christ, Lord. And you protect Amy and Mike. And happy birthday to Genesis. And we thank you for all the time that, that you've given us on this earth. And we just praise you and we thank you. And it's all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful rest. And I'll see you next week on Sunday.